Formula One has the most advanced technology and the biggest budgets in motorsports. So how in the heck do they have tires that just flat out stink? Why does the best car in the world have tires on it that are incapable of driving from my house to Disneyland and back? Or what if I told you that there's an elaborate global conspiracy to make Formula One tires worse than they could be, that they are engineered to fail. That F1 tire is planned obsolescence, happening in mere minutes in front of millions of fans who are powerless to do anything to stop it. So today, we're gonna find out why Formula tires only last 50 miles. You into conspiracy theories? Neither, flat earther friends. Let's go. Well, we here at Donut, we've had a... Sure, okay. Good morning and thanks to Off The Record for sponsoring today's episode. Now, it might come as a surprise to you guys, but we here at Donut, we've gotten a ticket or two in our lifetime. Ain't that right, champ? Well, would you believe that 41 million people get a ticket each year? That's 112,000 of you each day. If you pay that fine, you're admitting guilt. And on top of that, you're gonna get insurance increases on top of the fine you just paid. That sounds pretty silly to me. Wow, lawyer Jerry, who looks awfully like Tickling Tony, I didn't know that. So what can we do? Well, you can fight those tickets with the help of Off The Record. They're gonna connect you with an experienced lawyer who will fight the ticket on your behalf. It's just, just a slight problem here. Well, what if I have oil on my shoe from the annual turducken frying, which caused my foot to slip off the brake and I roll through a stop sign and then the cop writes me a ticket for that? Will they cover that? Well, Off The Record fights all types of moving violations, including speeding tickets, misdemeanors, and even DUI charges. What's even better is that Off The Record has a 97% success rate and offers clients a full refund if they're not able to either reduce their ticket or keep it off your driving record completely. Wow. How do I fight my turducken conundrum? Just, just go in the link in the description or, or head on over to offtherecord.com slash donut to get 10% off your first ticket. To understand why Formula One tires live such short lives, we need to know how a tire works and what makes a tire stop working. As the only point of contact between a car and the road, a tire's job is to create grip so you can accelerate, brake, and turn. To create grip, a tire's tread needs to be soft enough to squish into and around the tiny peaks and valleys that make up a rough road surface on a road or racetrack. And that's true for tread on your mom's minivan tires, and it's true for the tread on an F1 tire. Now, before you go blow up the comments saying, hey, Jer, F1 tires, they don't have tread. They're called slicks. Well, I gotta tell ya, slicks do have tread. Tread is just a layer of rubber that contacts the road surface. And tread is tread, whether it's slick or groovy. Sometimes we use the word tread when we really mean tread pattern. That's the grooves molded into the tread on road tires as well as Formula One rain tires, which maintain grip by channeling water out of the tread. So the job of every tire is to make grip, but not all tires are equally good at their job. A minivan on normal all season tires can produce about 0.7 Gs of cornering force or lateral grip and about 0.8 Gs of braking force. Now, how different is a Formula One car from a minivan? Well, it's capable of six times that, four and a half Gs of lateral grip and five Gs of braking grip. That's enough Gs to bring tears to your eyes. Literally, the amount of force will actually draw the tears out of your tear ducts. So how is the tread different between a minivan tire and an F1 tire, and why does one only last 50 miles? The tread on a conventional tire is made from natural rubber and about a dozen rubber-like synthetic chemicals with names like styrene butadiene and halogenated butyl rubber. Carbon black, an extremely pure form of carbon, is also mixed in to improve the tire strength, and this gives the tire their black color because rubber, if you didn't know, by itself is white. The tread also includes antioxidants and anti ozonants to prevent deterioration due to oxygen and ozone exposure, further extending the tire's life. Now, tread also includes silica to decrease rolling resistance, increasing fuel economy, and reducing wear. So a conventional tire, it can last up to 90,000 miles, and it's the specific chemical makeup or compound of the tread's rubber which makes that possible. So by fine-tuning that compound, a tire manufacturer can determine how long a tire lasts, how soft it is, and at what temperature it produces maximum grip. Now the exact formula of a Formula One tire is kept pretty hush-hush, but to fine-tune their performance, the compound includes 
more synthetic rubbers, and as little as 10% of the natural stuff. This provides increased strength, heat resistance, and more consistent grip. Now an F1 tire, they won't have as many antioxidants and anti-ozonants either because they don't last long enough for oxygen and ozone deterioration to be a concern. F1 tires will probably contain less silica because reduced rolling resistance means reduced grip. Now I'm saying probably because I don't know the chemical makeup. So your mom, she wants a tire that's comfortable, fuel economical, long lasting, and provides enough grip to be safe. Now F1 teams, they only want one thing, and that is a disgusting amount of grip, even if it only lasts for 50 miles. Now figuring out how to make an F1's tires massive amount of grip is currently done by just one company, Pirelli. Now they've been the exclusive manufacturer of Formula One tires for 10 years, but that can change if they don't satisfy certain requirements dictated by the FIA. The FIA, that's the Federation Internationale de Automobile, the shadowy international cabal that runs Formula One. Now F1 tire contracts have previously been held by Michelin, Bridgestone, and Goodyear, so they're always another company waiting to just slide in and steal all that tire money. There's always another dude who's just waiting in line to steal your girl. So you gotta watch out. To satisfy those FIA requirements and make sure the tires can withstand the tortures of an F1 race, Pirelli's tires are under constant development by 150 engineers at their R&D facility in Milan. Now, F1 tires are tested at speeds up to 280 miles per, subjected to impacts up to 162 miles per, and exposed to track surface temperatures up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, Formula One cars generate massive downforce, so each tire is load tested up to 2,200 pounds. And every F1 tire is precisely weighed, inspected, and x-rayed to look for flaws, unique barcoded for tracking, and 20% of the finished tires are put through destructive testing to ensure they match the F1's design specification. All that research and testing means Formula One tire development and manufacturing cost billions of dollars. They're so protective of their tires that if one has a blowout in a race, company employees will comb the track looking for any pieces that have been left behind just so other tire manufacturers can't get their hands on their secret formula. Give me that tire. So if billions are spent developing Formula One tires, why do they wear out so much faster than your mom's minivan tire? Well, an individual tire's lifespan is determined by a process called degradation. And degradation happens two ways. First is tread wear, and the second is a term called giving up. For a tire to make the kind of grip seen in Formula One, it's gotta be really soft, so it can really sink into the rough road surface. But that grip creates lots of abrasion, particularly when the car is turning. And even if you're not doing crazy drifts, your car's tires are slipping sideways just a little whenever they're turning. And at the microscopic level, the rough road surface acts like sandpaper, and it's constantly removing small amounts of rubber from the tire. So the more grip your car has, the harder it can turn, but that also means the more slipping and more abrasion scraping off of your tread. So Formula One tires wear much faster than your mom's tires as a consequence of all that grip and that abrasion that comes with it. But F1 tires also start off with a lot less tread. A brand new, long-lasting consumer tire can have tread as thick as 30 millimeters, and it takes ages to wear that all the way down to the internal structure. A slick Formula One tire tread can be as little as two or three millimeters thick. Now, under conditions with a lot of grip and abrasion, those three millimeters can go away really quickly, leading to a blowout which is exactly what happened in this year's British Grand Prix, where five teams had blowouts from worn tread. Now this doesn't actually happen very often, and the reason it happened at the Silverstone circuit comes down to a few factors. Some of them due to race strategy, but I'm only gonna talk about the nerdy ones. So first off, the Silverstone circuit has a lot of high-speed corners. Corpse Corner, for example, is a long right-hand sweeper taken at over 180 miles per hour, where one tire can be subjected to as much as 2,800 pounds of load. And secondly, F1 tires don't actually produce less grip just when the tread gets thinner. This means the drivers couldn't tell how worn the tread was because they still had grip, and before they knew it, they were all out of tread and lost pressure. It's exactly what happened to race winner Lewis Hamilton, who crossed the line with one flat tire. 
But wait, okay, I hear you F1 fans out there say 38 laps of Silverstone, that's 140 miles. That's way more than 50 miles. Well, good catch, smarty pants. And that's because tread wear isn't usually the reason for an F1 tire not making it past 50 miles. That's where giving up comes in. That's when the rubber compound hardens and can't sink into the rough road surface anymore to produce grip. Now with most consumer tires, this really isn't an issue because giving up is caused by repeated rapid heating and cooling. And that doesn't happen under normal driving conditions unless you drive like a boss. When your mom gets into her van, the tire is already soft enough to produce grip, even if it's below freezing outside. And while driving, friction between the tire and the road will cause the tire to heat up to around 120 degrees Fahrenheit, still well within the temperature range that the tire's compound can create grip. But soft compound tires in Formula One, they don't achieve ideal grip until nearly 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And that grip is maintained only until about 240 degrees F. Now a hard compound F1 tire doesn't get started until about 230 and will work up all the way to 285. Now that's a pretty narrow temperature range and it's why Formula One tires don't have a lot of grip when they're cold. It's also why teams keep the tires in heated blankets when they're not on the car. Now if that soft F1 tire exceeds 240 degrees, it'll start to lose grip and the tread can become too soft. It can't overcome the abrasion from the track and it slips too much. And the whole car will start to slide, making it hard to control, which can create a cycle. The too hot tire slips, creating more friction, which creates more heat, which creates more slipping and more friction, all the way up to about 300 degrees. That's when the tread starts to liquefy, which reduces the friction and temperature so the tread re-solidifies and forms blisters. So this temperature fluctuation is called heat cycling and giving up happens when there's been too much heat cycling to maintain the tire's ability to soften. The natural and synthetic molecules that make up a tire, they're just long chains of polymers composed of lots of atoms held together in long strings by lots of chemical bonds. And heating stretches those molecules, which is how the tire gets softer. When it cools, most of the molecular bonds snap back, but some are permanently broken or deformed. That's called plastic deformation. Now, normal heat cycling, even without overheating, can cause a tire to harden and become less able to create grip over time. And once a tire can't soften enough to be safe, it's said to have given up, like me after my first week of my New Year's resolutions. Sometimes I say, hey, this year I'm not gonna eat any sugar. And then two weeks later, I'm gonna open up a bakery. <laughs> now, F1 tires heat and cool very quickly, and so they give up very quickly. A Formula One tire that has worn out in 50 miles probably hasn't lost all of its tread. It's just probably given up. A tread wear and giving up are part of a tire compound trade-off. When you change the recipe to gain grip, you lose longevity. But with billions of dollars spent making F1 tires, couldn't there be longer lasting while still making massive amounts of grip? There's gotta be something else at play here. Could it be politics? Nah, but stick around, I'm about to tell you. Turns out that the extra factor at play is those FIA requirements foreshadowed earlier on. And unfortunately, it's not really an elaborate conspiracy. The FIA maintains that fast degradation rates are necessary to keep Formula One exciting for the fans, and the degradation targets they give to manufacturers like Pirelli are made publicly available. For any race, hard compound is the baseline for lap times, and FIA wants medium compound tires that are 1.2 seconds a lap quicker than the hard compound, and soft tires should be 2.2 seconds a lap quicker than the hard compound. But the FIA also wants the soft compound to exhibit two seconds of degradation after after 10% of the total race distance. So if a race is 50 laps, the soft tire should be running two seconds slower by the end of the fifth lap than it was in the first lap. And the same sort of rule applies for medium tires as well. So since FI1 rules require each car to use at least two tire compounds in every race, teams have to choose a strategy. For example, they could pit once, starting on medium but switching to hard compound, or they could pit twice, using soft tires, then medium tires, then soft tires again. The FIA says that rapid degradation maximizes the potential number of race strategies to create the greatest variety in the racing spectacle. So an F1 tire maker like Pirelli has to engineer compounds that degrade as precisely as possible to those FIA requirements. And that takes some serious chemical wizardry. And that's why specific formulas for each F1 compound are so closely guarded. In each season, 
As F1 cars and courses change, Pirelli has to race to keep up, revising their recipes to stay within the FIA's demands. Now, Pirelli, they currently make five different F1 compounds for dry conditions creatively called C1 through C5. Pirelli chose three of the five dry compounds for each race, and each team gets the same tire type. Pirelli chooses based on conditions for that event, the type of asphalt, the corner speeds, the past performance of Formula tires at that track. But they also have to make sure that the tires chosen wear out fast enough to keep things exciting. So for example, because of the severe conditions at Silverstone, they brought the three hardest compounds to the British GP, C1, C2, and C3. With all the blowouts that happened, that turned out to be a pretty exciting race, but not because of pitch strategy. Every team but one switched to C1 on lap 12 or 13. Now it's not easy choosing the tire for a race, and sometimes Formula One uses a track for the first time, so Pirelli isn't sure what to expect. Now a lot of people blame Pirelli for what happened at Silverstone, but even though they make and choose the tires for each race, it's not really their decision to make the tires that wear out artificially fast. That's mandated by the FIA. So Pirelli, along with F1 drivers, have even pushed back against the FIA's requirements. They worry that when the degree of tire degradation the FIA is demanding is dangerously high. And there's no reason why a tire company couldn't develop a tire that would have just as much grip and last way longer than 50 miles. I mean, there are tires used in any car series that last 55 or 60 laps. The tires used in the 24 hours of Le Mans are changed only after distances equivalent to two Formula One races. Now, the official statement from the FIA says that rapid degradation is for the improvement of the show, to maximize variety and create drama and spectacle. But these are the world's best drivers, the most advanced cars, and the biggest team budgets in motorsport. Does a variety and pitch strategy really make the show any better? After all, time in the pits is time spent not racing. So maybe it would just be a better show if the FIA just let them race. Where are my Formula One friends at? What do you guys think? Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of B2B. Follow me on Instagram at Jeremiah Burton. Follow us on Donut at Donut Media. If you want to see some more behind the scenes stuff that we do here at the new Donut Shop, hit us up on Donut Underground. If you go down there next to the subscribe button, there's a little thing that says join. Ground. We got a Discord. You can come chat with me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Till next week. Bye for now.